we have really got it twisted lately. There, it's coming up. It's humanism where we actually believe that we were born good and that we are ultimately good. All you have to do is have kids, be around some kids, and you don't have to treat them. I mean, you don't have to teach them how to be evil, how to be sinful, how to be wrong. They don't naturally do good. In fact, they naturally do what is evil and bad. They are an exact example of what we see in the word. After the fall, just read in Genesis. After chapter three, look in chapter four. One chapter away, you see the first murder happening. Then not too long after that, you've got them doing all of this stuff between chapters four all the way to seven when God's like, you know what? I'm done. Noah, get in the boat. I'm about to start over. I got to kill all these jokers because they've messed up the whole plan here. But I've already put some salvation in, in the plan with Jesus. It's crazy. Without God and we lead ourselves, we end up with the Tower of Babel stuff. We end up in a spot where we are needing to go ahead and cleanse the world. And then after he cleanse the world, we build in towers and stuff. It's just some crazy stuff. If you just look at the word and see the full story, God is not on trial. We are on trial and we come up lacking every time. We are not good. If you look at your own life, you don't have to look at anybody else. Look at any other kids. If you think about your own life, you can see where you have failed. We will be just like that. That rich young ruler. You've done well, but you've come up lacking. Oh, I left out the parable of the vineyard in Matthew chapter 20. It is so pertinent and a great example or and a demonstration of how unfair it seems to us. Let me give it to you real quick. OK, so you I I will be the the estate manager here and I go out and I'm needing some work done at my house. How about this? And I start out early in the morning. Let's say I go out at 8 a, at 7 a.m. I'm going out at 7 a.m. and I see some workers who need some work. And I'm like, hey, yes, I need some stuff done in the back. I will we'll agree to you get paid uh, one hundred dollars for for a day's work. And they're like, cool, bet they get to work. And then three hours later, I see some more people hanging around in this time. And I'm like, hey, y'all need what's up? You want to work like, yeah. And we agree. We'll make sure you pay. You're paid a fair wage. Two hours later, three hours later, I see some more people just standing around. I'm like, dude, what are y'all doing? Y'all just chilling. What's happening? Some different people. And they're like, well, we don't have any work. I'm like, Well, you want some work? I got some work for you. I'll pay you well. Good. All right. Great. And then three hours later, I go and find somebody and it's close to it's close to getting off time and then they're about to get off work. And these people come in and they work and I say, we're going to pay you as well. And then I go and talk to, let's say, uh, Myron is in the estate as well. And I say, Myron, could you collect up all the workers? It's time to get off. And could you pay everyone, starting with the people who came in last? And everybody's going to get a hundred dollars. So the people who came in and uh, worked at the very end, they get one hundred dollars. The person who worked three hours. $100. The person who worked six hours, $100. When it gets to the people who've worked 12 hours, because I skipped over the nine, but when it gets to the 12, they're like, oh man, this is going to be good because if they're getting 100, then I'm going to get it. And then I look at them and say, no, what did we agree on? You said you were going to, you agreed to work for this day for $100. So how can you say that I'm unfair? Well, they only worked one hour. And what's that to you? You get what I agreed to give you. And if I, the one who am paying everybody, agreed to pay the guy who only worked one hour, that's me. That's up to me. And yet that's where he comes up with this statement. Jesus says the first will be last and the last will be first. He tells this. This is an actual parable that he tells them that the kingdom of God is like. It's like it's not based on your performance. It's a free gift. 
I've, I've given you the gift of salvation, not based on works. And if you put that into the perspective of history, he chose the Jews first. They've been in this thing for a long time since Abraham got pulled in and Abraham was circumcised and justified and, and promised Israel and all of this stuff. They've been in it for a while. And then Gentiles came in later. But the word that Jesus is saying is the 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 playing field is level. Jew and Gentile all under sin. No one good enough. All in need of a savior. And he is given the same free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ makes the difference. He's the one that is our righteousness. He's the one who is good. He's the only one who is good. It's not like I come into Christ and now I'm good. No, I'm not good ever. I have to submit and surrender to God every day. And remember, there's nothing good in this flesh. It's the only good in me is God. I hope that you've been helped and I hope that you understand that no one is good enough but Jesus. And through Jesus, we have been made righteous and put in right standing with God. So that is how we can gain eternal life through Christ alone. Amen. Amen.